I think I'm streaming. Can you hear me, dog? Uh-oh, I'm getting the alerts. As soon as I went live, you heard that alert, right? My iPad old, though. I don't know if it mutes notifications. I kind of don't want to mute notifications. Let me see if I can hear myself. I'm just doing mic check one, two, one, two. No Joel Santana. I got two watching. I got the live chat popping. I got to add somehow. My iPad old, though. I don't know if it mutes notifications. I, kinda I can hear myself. I actually hear my fan on my computer a little bit louder. We here. We're in the building. Okay. I got my chop tap. My Ha! I got my top chat popping. Hey, what's good, Byron? Let me minimize this real quick. Uh, let's have splice in the front and center. I don't know what I'm doing with that yet. MG, the past, present, and future. I ain't nobody. Geez, I'm chilling. I ain't nobody special person. What's good, Zoot? What's good, Dejan? You. All right, there was my sound device. Can y'all hear this piano? Is my sound coming through? Is my sound coming through? I'm lit. How do I switch this to live chat? This has got to be live chat. All messages lit. What's good, Jammy? What's good, Ellie Tracks? What's good, Stefan? What's good, Dope Snare? What's good, everybody I ain't say what's good to yet? I got 18 of y'all here. Okay, so y'all can hear that. All right, so my whole my whole philosophy is I have a lot of reason stuff, as you can see, and I never really think about using it on its own because I'm always in like Studio One or FL Studio or something. So I'm going to try to rewire it today. I think Studio One has one of the easiest rewires. <laughs> Maybe. No, it does. Studio One's rewire is mad easy. Uh, live? No. MG the future. Live. Rewire. Bars. All right, so we're going to do it like that. I think I can move this over more. What's good, Grimy Needle? What's good, Byron? What's good, uh, Jammy? What's good, Drew? What's good, Jake J? What's good, Make Reads? What's good? What's good? There's a 30 second delay between live video and our messages. Yeah. YouTube's live, uh, <laughs> ain't really live. Sometimes that's a good thing. Like, if the aliens came and abducted me real quick, they could cut off the stream and y'all wouldn't even know what happened. It would just go off. How many of y'all believe in aliens? No, dumb question. Not how do you believe in aliens, but how many of you feel like there's just not humans on this planet? Way better question. Where's Rewire at? I love a good alien conversation. It always turns into a debate though. Like people who haven't experienced it versus me. I've experienced it. I'm an experiencer. If I knew how to find rewire, I would have rewired already. What's good, pupil? Is it rewire in this list? Or am I bugging? Like, rewire is a thing, right? Like, I ain't tripping, am I? Like, there's a little yellow icon and it just says rewire. Maybe not. Maybe that's my brain on drugs. Huh. Ooh, let me see something. Let me see something. Uh, this is what I do. A lot of people get mad at me, but I'm quick to Google something. Where are you hiding, my friend? Oh, please don't give me a long article without the answer. 
Yeah, rewire is a folder. What you mean, bro? I don't have a rewire folder. No, 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 you do. You do have to open reason and then you get to do all of that. But what I'm saying is once upon a time, there's a little yellow icon that just said rewire. I'll find out in a minute. Yeah, because reason's open already. Yeah, I'm under instruments. I don't have rewire installed. So my whole idea of doing this video that way is trash. I have firewire. I don't have rewire. And I have Ableton Live installed, which would have gave me rewire too. So, I'm going to have to work in a goofy way. So, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'm going to still use my favorite piano in the world. So, let's go back to Spice. I can't believe they play or hating on me like this. Let's look up a classical piano. Close reason. You have to open Studio One first. Oh, come on, dog. Come on, man. I gotta move my microphone. I think it's in my way. It should say rewire, starting rewire engine, right? I cannot see the whole bottom of my screen. MG, what's your thoughts? The question is, has MG got thoughts? There she is. Oh, oh, I feel like that, uh, that Denzel Washington emoji. Oh, oh, CMP saved the day. Let's live. Okay, so let me catch up on these comments. I'm sweating like a, a big black guy. That's what I'm sweating like. Um, close, close reason. Rewire allows two programs to talk to each other. Factuals. You have to open up Studio One first. Factuals. Imagine if Propeller had shut it down reason at reason four and went third party. I think if reason would have focused on his racks and modules and did what we were talking about on Twitter, reason would make a lot of money. And reason kind of has its own splice where it's already renting and trialing and uh, uh, subscribe for like plugins and rack extensions. So to see them where they are now, I think they make a lot of money that way because Reason has a lot of good technology that can be extrapolated just to make, you know, a VST rack. So instead of that worrying, Reason worrying about sequencers and features, they can just take their rack and make that a plug-in. I think they make a lot of money. But that's me. Um, is Rewire smoother than it used to be? Because it used to be trash. In Studio One, I'm about to find out. I did do this this time last year, which is hilarious. I haven't done it since, but that was with Ableton Live. And with uh, Ableton Live, it was really smooth. MG, what's your thoughts on the caravans coming to the USA? Um, I don't know too much about them. I try not to pay attention to mainstream politics. Um, I kind of feel like the mainstream media is trolling us a lot of the time. I kind of feel like a lot of these memes are supposed to get you in an emotional state or they're trying to play on you in turn for certain elections and stuff to make people do some impulse voting or impulse shootings or whatever the heck is going on in this country when it comes to that. So I haven't been paying attention to it, but I would say the reason I look like I look um, and I'm from where I'm from is because a bunch of caravans came to visit my ancestors in this country about 400 years ago. So there's always that. Drew says, which version of TuneTrack Easy Keys do you use? I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, I just guess I have the latest version. It wouldn't been a rap. I found a reason the game would have been over. Yes, 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 yes. You straight now, boom, boom. Studio One Lord, boom, boom. BK Banger Peace, boom, boom. Reason has now gotten to the point of being damn near a full standalone doll. It's always been a standalone doll. Reason's always been self-contained, though. I guess that's what you mean, having all the third-party features, but the best thing about Reason is not needing those features for beat making. Reason doesn't need to be third-party like that. I like the program they have now. Bars. 
What's down, MG? David Treasure. I don't have a Jamaican or Patois accent, so I, I'm pretty sure I butchered that. What's good, Bobby E? What's good, Nico Leon? No. I always try to like read that like Nickelodeon. It's just Nicole on. Your name is Nicole, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Nicole is on 1209. Is 1209 your birthday? Because if 1209 is your birthday, 1209 is my birthday. Stay woke. What's good, Stone City? What's good, Ableton gang? No, I'm not in Ableton today. You're silly. Do you think people are going after midi pack customers for publishing, declining the music industry, becoming less of a community? I don't think it's a real thing. Like, I don't think the threat of internet money, like chasing placements and sniping things is a real thing. I don't think they can justify it. I don't think they can keep up. What I really think happened is that internet money or someone that's a representative or an affiliate of them was trolling Cash Money AP and they paid for the collab and used the whatever vault maybe pack and they did that intentionally because they're petty. And that's what happened. That's the only way that could have manifested. Outside of that, there's too much music coming out, even on the mainstream, like Black Eyed Peas came out, Anderson Pot came out. Like you do that 12 times however many, how many songs came out the other night and you do that every week. No one has time to be going through the two bar intervals to figure out where their MIDI is. Also, the songs that we, we find this is happening are SoundCloud songs. So who are you going to sue and who are you getting money out of? The, the song that they produce isn't even a big song. So it is ridiculousness. I think it's good for discussion. I think it's good to correct and discuss and uh, take a stance on so that the bigger companies aren't doing that. But on our level and these little micro beefs that we see, these micro transactions of passive aggression, nah, we ain't got nothing to worry about. They bugging. So Avery, what's good, brother? BBG, what's good, brother? Jake J, I saw that tweet with the machine and complete purchase. I'm ready to see what you do with that. <laughs> Jake J, all my brothers on that tweet. Oh, God, even pupil and all of them. Everyone was confused about that tweet. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, God. Y'all bugging. Hold up. I got to show y'all. I'll come back to that. MG, do you use hardware? And what do you think about the OPZ? I do have hardware. I don't use hardware because my, uh, my sound card is trash. I have a lot of hardware, though. I have a Evolver. I have a SP. I have a Sample Track. I have a Triton. I have every controller, I have a DDJ, and I can't put them all on my desk at once, or I would. Where's that tweet at? Yeah, so <laughs> this is what Jake J. No was talking about. I said, all right, so the MK3 Complete Ultimate is on its way. And immediately after that, I said to someone, not me, I was talking about Black Friday, mad people are gonna buy these combinations. I'm not buying those combinations. And everyone kept like commenting. It's like, yo, don't do this, blah, 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 blah. Nah, nah. I was trolling, fellas. But I trolled within the, the tweet. No one expands them, though. So it is what it is. So me and Nicole got the same birthday. That is lit. What's good, Mad Looper? How is music still sustainable as an entity with so much of it coming out? Are we shooting ourselves in the foot? Channel 501. Channel 501, no. Uh, I think uh, I think the music industry is healthy. I think everything is fine. And I think a lot of people are making money. I mean, Splice is proof of that. Um, what I think is happening, though, is uh, the way m m music makes money isn't clearly defined. So we're not relying on old media. So old media, right? Like you'd have to get an artist, you have to get a single, you have to get into the radio, and then the radio gets their money from advertisements of local businesses and things like that. So although that seems like a really huge thing, it's really not when you think about the reach of radio stations and how many urban radio stations there are. It was never really super served or super saturated to begin with, but they make a lot of money from that. And of course, doing shows and tours and things like that. For our Cardi B's and artists on that level and higher, None of that goes away. If anything, is even bigger. Um, when you look at an art, artist like Logic, who you probably haven't really heard of or listened to music from, but every show he goes to is packed out. And he has a really diverse fan base of um, Hispanics and Latinos and white people and a lot of different races that participate now because of social media. 
So what I th- so what I'm thinking is happening is that our our market has expanded really wide, and what we are suffering through or what we're struggling with is trying to take that old model and what it looked like and apply it to a bigger market, and you can't. So it's almost like the mainstream is becoming synonymous with your SoundCloud people because their promotion tactics are the same. Um, The music sounds the same because of people like us making the music. And everything is kind of equal footing in terms of the art. But what separates Cardi B and all of them from everyone else who can do it in that tier of income and earning is the fact that they have money put into them. You know, they're exalted by millionaire, billionaire companies. So they'll always have that. But the middle ground and everyone else like us, we're just kind of stuck competing for a very large market. And I think that's why it's probably more important now than ever to niche, to niche and to find what your tribe is and to create what you want to create. And it's more liberating. You can be independent. Um, My YouTube channel proves it, right? Like imagine if I was an MG The Future teaching and I was MG The Future an artist and I had 20,000 subscribers or fans of my music. And then you take that 20000 and you multiply that for a single, $1.99, that's $40,000, hypothetically. The law of averages says 10% support, 1% of the 10% actually buy. So 1% of 20000 what is that, 200 So it'd be more like $800, but it just depends. It's just, I think there's so much opportunity out there. And everyone's eating to some degree. You just got to figure out what it looks like right now. And more importantly, you need to figure out what that looks like tomorrow. Because whatever you figured out today is already old. I'm figuring out things today that people have been doing for five years. I'm hitting in at the tail end of YouTube. I'm hitting it in at the tail end of a lot of things. So I'm always looking forward to the future. That answer was way longer than it needed to be. <laughs> yeah, that thread. You got me on that tweet. Hey. Yo, that construction beat kit kit beat was hilarious. Ah, do I want to get into that? Or I'm like 20 minutes behind the chat. Hold up. I'm going to come back to that, you will. HTML Mentor. Hey, CMP, what's up? Hey, HTML Mentor. Jake J said, damn, you got (laughs) Jamari, what's good, Jamari? J Mac, Scorpio. Blood Dragon says, music labels are signing for everybody. Hey, what's good, G Session? Salute. Did Reason refusal to incorporate VST's high-resolution sampling cost them not to be in the front? Is Ableton doing the same mistake by not doing VST3 and Melodyne integration? Yes. Melodyne is shooting its, itself in the foot by coming late to the party of innovation. Like, they're dope with their controller. They're dope with their stock effects. They're dope with their handling of time. But what they're not dope is with their piano roll. Because I think they, I think Ableton came in as Acid Pro on crack. I don't think Ableton came in as Cubase on crack. So they're never really adjusting the MIDI issue. And it was surprising that they had a polyphonic audio to MIDI conversion. Reason doesn't have that. Fruity Loops doesn't have that. Ableton figured it out. But they didn't go on top of that. They didn't really like make it all that it can be. They didn't make Ableton great again. That should be a hat. A black hat with the Ableton logo. MAGA. Make Ableton great again. Yo, if y'all see that, let me know. I want I want my 3%. But yeah, it's going to be all right, though. I'm, I'm actually surprised newer dolls aren't coming out yet. Because the BM3 people, um, the, the Fairlight or Stagelight people, the people who are doing stuff for iPads, like if they made some of that stuff for the computer, man. Then a song for 99 cents and people still stream anyway. No, Blood Dragon. Uh, what? Yeah, I guess... You're going back to that older conversation, or I'm going back to an older conversation. Just real quick about that. The 99 cents that you can stream anyway. You get paid off the streams. So it's okay for you to have 20,000 fans and they all stream your music. That's how they found you. But you're always going to have a 1% to 10% that fuck with you. And they're going to buy your music. That's who you That's who you create content for. That's who you create music for. That's who you talk to. That's who you respond to. That's who you email. That's who you send gifts to. That's who you go visit. That's who you tour with that smaller percent that is paying the 99 cents. So I don't I don't look at it as like a, a mentality of scarcity. I look at it in terms of the mentality of how do I widen that audience and more more importantly, how do I become effective in the audience that I have? You, you'll you get it if you want it. Made my first two on Instacord. Thanks for those tutorials. They were a big help. Hey, no problem, David. What's good, sweet E? 
aside from shows, da da. Is hip hop culture on life support? No. Hip hop did what it set out to do. It became an international and national treasure. And as a side of, and as a side effect, in my opinion, I think a lot of people are struggling with what that has manifested and looks like. But what was ironic is like one of the things that people make fun of, right? Or that we're the challenge that we're dealing with culturally is how you take a uh, black and brown people and everything that we did with hip hop, the way we dress, dance, talk, drew, all that, right? And then you look at the media reports back then, how they treated us and chastised us and marginalized the art form. And then they did this meme on Twitter. And I think it's socially constructed. I don't think it's organic, but it's a bunch of white kids listening to trap music on a car and they're all dancing. And people are retweeting it saying the same thing, like, hey, hip hop, watch out for your culture. Everyone wants your culture, but you're not profiting from it, right? But I think what's interesting about the sentiment of looking at the white kids enjoy trap music and borrowing the slang, the language, borrowing the N-word and things like that, the way that uh, the old heads are judging them is the same way that the mainstream judged us. So I always find it more curious that we're, if we're not careful, we'll end up perpetuating the thing that we created it for. Like uh, you created hip hop to establish your voice, to establish your presence, to become a political arm, and now that it's in the hands of other people, as you designed it to be, you run risk of uh, not really oppressing because you really can't oppress a majority, but you run the risk of turning nasty. I'll use that word, becoming nasty about what you created. And I don't I don't want to get caught up into that. I, I want white kids <laughs> to, <laughs> to sag their pants and wear Averix jackets. I need the 90s to come back because I need B-Rad from Malibu's Most Wanted walking down the street. I need that because they're going to make the Averix jackets and the bubble coats again if they start wearing it. So uh, I'm cool with it. I think it's dope. I think it's dope that is a wider culture. But what that means is you niche smaller. Um, you, you have you have more micro markets because there's way more different types of people doing it. So hip hop ain't dying. It's grown. We're, we're just late to the party. Blade Dragon. Spend so much money. Reason messed up by not doing anything substantial productivity wise because reason's all inclusive. Once you know reason, you can make anything you want. Reason 11 will probably handle that. Both Ableton Reason likes some MIDI features, optimization, Matt Looper. Yeah, that's because they expect a lot of us to know how to make music. Um, the problem with these apps not evolving is that they expect everyone's a musician already because you got to really think about it. Piano roll, Instacord, Scalar, Easy Keys. These are all tools for people who don't know how to play for real. Like, I don't know if y'all seen my old videos with like Tommy D, like Tommy D used to be here. Um, Tommy D could play play. Like he's the best pianist I've ever met in, in, in the sense of being by ear. He could play anything he can hear, right? So he doesn't need none of those tools. He needs a record button and that's it. And I think these programs are designed by people like him, for people like him. And then they started adding new things. And what they did to appease broke people like us who didn't have the classes, lessons, or time or tools, they gave us loops. They gave us Rex player. So they said, hey, take these construction kits, move them around, make your house music. But then hip hop goes, well, we're not just sampling anymore. We're not just using drum breaks and bongo fills. We actually need tools so we can do our Scott Storch runners, Justice League, that kind of stuff. And then by the time they give us the sounds for it, they realize most of us didn't know how to play it. Um, and then that's when we start getting these chords and scales players and things like that. And they're starting to wake up to the fact that their largest base aren't the old school traditional musicians who play by ear or in a band or in church. They're just regular, ordinary, everyday people who love the expanding culture of hip hop music and are going for a certain aesthetic, which doesn't require all those tertiary skill sets. So they'll catch up. But for people like me, I'm already in my 30s. It's too late. I literally seen someone play a track for five seconds and lost their monetization. Yeah, facts. <laughs> Motivation or mod modization? What's good, George? What's good, Eric? God dang, I'm behind on the comments. I'm so sorry, y'all. I was supposed to be doing something. Let me just read. I really don't need to do nothing in Reason Studio One. I like reading these comments because I never get a chance to talk to most of you. <sighs> Oh, Propeller Heads had one of the most successful financial quarters or years they've had in a long time because of Reason 10. So I think they're lit. YouTube shadow bands, bro. It's not a free market. Bob Little. 
I wasn't I wasn't talking about YouTube unless you're talking to somebody else. Yeah, I don't think I don't think the platforms are the the growing market I'm talking about. The market's the people, not the platform. YouTube could die tomorrow and there'll be we'll be on Periscope doing this. So I I don't put too much stock into the monopoly of technology, especially because like Mark Zuck Yo, they try to kill me, try to choke me when I said that. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg and them are like they're in court all the time if y'all haven't been paying attention. That's why I said about the mainstream news. They don't cover the stuff we care about. But marking them, you know, those emails and those privacy uh, violations and the new European laws that are coming, that's going to affect us miraculously. Like America has this obligation to do what the European Union does. wonder what that's about. But anyway, um, it's interesting. The, the battlefield is interesting when it comes to that. Why do you do me like that? That was a real thought-provoking topic, current landscape industry, but fair enough. I didn't do you with the blah, blah. I may have said blah, blah, because I was reading so fast. I wasn't saying blah, blah to the idea or sentiment. But I think I answered that. This is just late, right? I think reason Ableton piano roll is fine. Minor stuff we can do to get ready. Yeah. We always last to the party. Yes. When you write dope boys in a search and spice and click the loop at SC Trap 2, you'll find Eminem Killshot piano sample. Lit. I'm telling you, selling physical stuff is bigger money. Plus, you can cut through the digital noise. Yes, but you need a marketplace to sell to. You can't just create something and say it's for sale. No one cares. Um, and that's the bigger part of anybody's success in music. Like, yeah, I can I can make a drum kit and I know where to go to order the plastic USB sticks and shape them like an SP404, for instance, right? And, you know, you pay it out of pocket. I buy 100 of them, right? And that'll run me, what, 5Gs or so up front. So I get 100 of them and I'm selling them 50. I'll probably break even. I'm not going to sell all of those if no one cares about the SP404, the USB stick, or my drum kit. So I think a lot of people try to conduct business in a way of what works for other people or what has worked ever. And that's good because you're analyzing. You're using your mind. But I think people should really focus on what works for them because it always looks different. It always manifests different. And that's why every successful person has a different story. So it's cool to figure out what the hacks are on paper. But in real life, the real life hack to success in any business or music or selling of anything, it's there's something else. There, there's this tertiary component and it's pretty much dictated by the market you find. And a lot of people make music and don't have a market to be making or selling music. No, I take that back. You can make music in your bedroom for yourself and for your friends and family. You do that all day and you can buy all the plugins, get all the dolls, watch all my videos and be El Contento. But it's very, very, it looks very different and feels very different when you're creating content, music, visuals, raps, songs for a market and you want to sell it and make money. There are two different things. And that's a problem a lot of hobbyists slash super purists have versus tight beat producers and everyone else. Because those two mentalities are not the same and they have way different requirements. On this side, you just need to ramp up and develop enough skills to be efficient at creating product. But your major skill set that's always growing is your ability to connect the product to people. You do not learn that when you're going in piano roll and downloading Omnisphere and buying Keyscape and updating the firmware in the NPC. None of that has anything to do with how do you create something to make someone feel. And then you make them feel in such a way that they feel like supporting you back or creating a reciprocity of energies. Like, whoa, this person provided value. I'm going to give them 99 cents for this download. Because most of the people that support you financially know they can get the stuff for free. So you got to ask yourself the question, why do people buy music? That is the bigger question. Why do people still buy music? Why do people still buy sounds when they're spliced? Why do people still uh, buy Akai Fires and uh, uh, MPC? Why, why, why am I on a, a second Akai MPC Mini when I already have one? Like, why, why? Why do we keep indulging? Once you can answer that, and if that's connected to your business, that's where you get your success from. You got to answer that question first. Bum. Oh, I'm way behind. Oh, trying to catch up, dog. I 
I'm so lost. I just scrolled it once and it like redid everything. So is Harrison Mixbus going to be a major player and possible full service doll? Harrison Mixbus is niche. At the moment, Harrison Mixbus infrastructure is not standalone, so it kind of relies on the platform it's built off of. Harrison Mixbus is built off of Audor. It's on version five. So unless Harrison wants to make a full-fledged DAW on their own, they're kind of at the mercy of taking their digital magic from their consoles and their digital stuff and placing it on top of the infrastructure of Audor. Um, and something was really interesting, uh, Gamma Ray had pointed out that uh, Traction Waveform, they created an API kit for their DAW. It's fully modular and you build your own plugins and your own DAW out of it. And they're offering this as a free toolkit. So maybe uh, if Harrison switched from Audor to Traction, it might grow and add those features that Traction already has. But um, the way they're conducting business and answering the question of how they're serving people is through competing with Pro Tools in terms of sound and functionality. So they're not trying to compete with Cubase Logic Live Studio One. They're competing with the, the mixer market and the people, more importantly, I've noticed, not people doing audio mixing, people doing video mixing. So movies, television, or just content for YouTube, you, you still need a linear DAW to do things and get a certain sound. So they have a niche market. If they want to expand that, they have to rewrite everything. I don't feel like they're going to, though. The main income is passive income. It only works if you have a huge fan base, which takes long to cultivate. Yeah, which is why you start like now. <laughs> the earlier you start that, <laughs> the easier it becomes. But even then, that's that's tertiary. Who says that? Like Nipsey Hussle sold what? A thousand mixtapes for a hundred dollars or some nonsense like that? Nah, there's ways to manipulate the matrix. Your main income is based on your main values. Yeah, it's cool to have five different streams of income, which is recommended if you're becoming a millionaire, but that comes from having a certain amount of income to invest into those smaller things. You know, you can't get the, from point A to point C, D, E, F, G without getting to point B first. A lot of people are trying to skip point B mentally. Don't skip point B. Yeah, compare MIDI features S1, for example, ghost channels and stuff. I'm way behind on that conversation. I don't know anymore. You don't need a huge fan base. Just a loyal tribe. A hey, bars. Stage light on the desktop felt clunky. They might have worked with the kinks. And then there's waveform lurking in the shadows. Yes. But I think all of, all of those platforms mentioned are limited by budget right at the moment. So they have to do little cool things until they can really pay for the coders that they're going to need. Waveform is dope, but too out of the box. Yeah, it forces you to work a certain way. It's like it's like what Ableton and Acid try to do. Like, you want to work with it one sound at a time. White kids enjoy hip-hop? Yes. Harrison is nice for mixing, but that's it. Okay, that's what I was talking about earlier. MG, I'm Puerto Rican, and I use the N-word all the time. What's your thoughts on <laughs> the meaning of this word this day? <laughs> DJ Georgie Porgy says, yo, I drop the N-bomb all the time. What do you think about it these days? And it's hilarious you mentioned that because isn't that something that the meme of that question comes from Takashi 69 right? Charlemagne the God just asked him that and they posted that clip on uh, YouTube or Twitter. I think uh, the, the proliferation of the word of the N-word is interesting to me because I grew up up north. So being in a northern place and being in the environments where that comes from, where that became cool in the sense of hip hop and music and stuff. Um, no, I, I don't remember evaluating the weight or value of that word um, because it was so, it's used so passively. I, I think mainstream America or the bigger, larger majority of well-to-do black people even think that people in the hood or in these smaller communities are like, being chastised by grandma and being told slave stories and watching the Amistad every weekend 
because they say like, how can you use that word if you knew all of these things that surround the origins of it? But those people who say that don't understand us or that culture. So they can't justify that. And you can't use that justification inside the culture either. So I don't have a problem with it in the culture. The problems come from people outside of that culture. It's black and white people alike. Because there's been plenty of times when I went to Pennsylvania for the summer and to an all white area or all white county and I'm skateboarding uh, and I'm with my skateboard friends. And, you know, they listen to hip hop and Limp Biscuit and all those rock rap albums. And then they try to say it during the raps and then they look at you. So when they say it and look at you, what's going on in their mental framework? Um, what are they trying to evaluate? What are they worried about? What are they concerned about? All of that is what I'm offended by. I'm offended by people who, who have all of that going on and then want to use it around me or to, towards me or towards someone else because the only reason why that came out of you so unnaturally is because it wasn't part of your culture or part of your upbringing. So you're using it to be edgy. You're using it to be funny. You're using it to get away with it as a power, as a hierarchy problem. You're using the N-word for many things. And in rare cases, people are using it to degrade you or become racist and things like that. That's not so much the reality now because you watch Hispanic people on Twitter use it with each other. I watch Asian people on Twitter use it with each other. So the adoption of that word, the reason why it makes people uncomfortable is what I find offensive. So if you're going to use it towards me anyway and you feel awkward about it, that energy is what's pissing me off. Yo, if you're not my nigga, don't say it. But if you're trying to be, if you're trying to turn cornrows into boxer braids, leave it alone too. You feel me? Like don't adopt it if you're not, <laughs> you're not about that life. It's just, it, it's just, there's, there's levels to it. There's, there's other, there's other things going on, <laughs> but, but it's going to happen anyway because it's repetition and the music's repetitive and everyone's consuming it. So it's a dead fight and it's a good thing because if Asians are calling each other that, then there's nothing that someone can call me that'll put me out of my element anymore. It's even more funny now. When people who shouldn't be using it are using it, it's even more funny to me. So if someone was trying to come at me sideways and they said that to me, their culture actually stole the weight and that oppression and that anxiety away from the word too. They helped. They helped what we were trying to do, what no one thought we were doing with the word. All the other cultures taking it and making it normalized actually did exactly what we said was happen, what would happen and why we were using it. So we're always right in that case. And if you're wondering, mighty good gin and tonic. Actually, it's two types of coffees and I need something to mix it up with. Don't judge me. Um, but yeah, that's that. Georgie Porgy with the with the strong questions, bro. I ain't got I ain't got time to use that part of my brain. That's not my creative brain. Oh what I disagree with is accepting that the passive income is the source of income now. I'll start doing commissions for custom music if that's the future of my music career. I understand. I, I just don't think we can define how you're going to make music money with music because there's too many ways to make money with music. I guess what I'm trying to do is not get people to box themselves into a path or a way. There's just too much out there. There's too much market out there. Hey, MG, are you going to try to pre this Adam like craft masters? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not, guys. I am probably not going to buy another controller. I probably need to sell all my controllers. And not sell them because they're not good. Sell them because I can't use them. I can't use Ableton Push and Akai Fire at the same time. I can't use the SP404 and the sample track at the same time. You can, but I can't. Like, my brain... I'm not like a... Creatively, I'm not an octopus. I know a lot of people who like the gumbo style of creation and are octopuses. Like, they can just use the MPC-60 for snares, and then they can go to the ASR real quick for pitch shifting. Like, they create VSTs for their hardware, like that one purpose, like I use Serato for this, they use that for that. I didn't grow up with them that way, so I don't see them that way. I got every piece that I got for a certain genre of music. Maybe I could do it that way. You know, Ableton, bring it over, do lo-fi, SP404 lo-fi, Akai Fire, bring it over, do trap. And then, you know, in my mind, I thought that was gonna work. I really thought I was going to be able to pull that off. But as I, I and I've said this a year ago, <laughs> family, 
this is this is this is what I use ninety five point five percent of the time. And, and and if I'm lucky, I'm loading Atlas or Impact to use the pads. Sometimes I'm not even doing that. So, um, I I love. I love the technology. I think, I think that that's a difference. I love the Akai Fire. I love the Ableton Push. I love the technology. I love the experience that they give me when I'm using them, and them taking my mind off of of the technical parts, and just be able to freely express yourself and experiment in the lights and the sounds and the tactile, like that part of you, the kid part of me. But I've been making music so long. With up without, you know, being poor or not being able to afford certain things at certain times, that uh, my workflow without them is so profoundly faster than with them. So, for me, outside of experimenting with it and be able to talk as a matter of fact from experience instead of speculating, and me being able to show other people who have questions and me having access to it because it's expected behavior, um, in function. I, I don't know. I don't know if I need another one. I don't know I know if I need the new ones. I don't know if I need, you know, um, even like the one I'm on the fence right now is the MPC uh, Live. Like in, in my mind, I, I'm doing it again because that's, that's expensive. That's expensive as my push was. But if my push was a telltale <laughs> for the experience I'm going to have with the live, then maybe I should slow down. And that's why I'm only talking about it and I haven't bought it yet. I'm talking myself off the cliff. But then when I talk myself off the cliff, they put out that damn update. <laughs> and then when I was talking myself off the Spectrosonics cliff, uh, Eric Persing made another Spectrosonics uh, announcement that there's going to be a Black Friday update. So what I'm trying to do is to chill the hell out until Black Friday, until I know that all these false flags of dopeness are just false and that they're just trolling us. And then when my birthday comes, which is December 9th, I'll make the decision on whether or not I want to buy NPC Live or not. But when I get it, it's not for Doll Wars. It's not for um, the utility of it because I have Nakai in front of me. It's actually for the portable part of it. It's for the, instead of being on my iPad, I can use that. Um, I'm starting to travel more. I can use that. My SP404 is portable. The, the Akai is portable. I can use them together, portable, and make real lo-fi like the the non gentrified version, the real lo-fi. I'm thinking that way. I'm not thinking about it in terms of replacing anything. So the Atom, I don't have a thought like that, that it would be utility to me, me personally. MG, are you interested in exploring Max for Live and making your own virtual devices? No, not right now. I don't have a I don't have a plug-in idea that hasn't been created. I noticed when I started my YouTube channel, I wished for a lot of things and like three companies showed up and made them all. Clev Grand is one of them. Like anytime I see out in the universe that there's uh, someone connected to me that's doing what I'm doing, I support them instead of trying to do what they do. What I mean is like uh, I told this story a while back um, I used to draw like a lot. I thought I was going to be an animator. I told that part of the story with Flash. But at school, I would draw. And in 10th grade, I met uh, Jamie Jones. And Jamie, draw, draw. He drew, drew. And at, at, as a 10th grader, looking at his drawing, I noticed our skill gap. <laughs> and, and, and I understand it. And I stopped drawing that day. And... um. I supported him. You know, he started doing the uh, Game Informer covers. He started doing the, uh, what is it called? Concept art. He's a concept artist for Bungie. So like the Destiny stuff he did, the uh, Halo stuff he did. Like Jamie's a phenomenal artist. Now part of me is like, well, if I sensed our skill gap and I would just double down, by this age I'd be at least as dope as he was when he did the magazine covers. <laughs> And that would be an interesting thought, but I'd rather just know that I met him, I know him, and that part of me that I saw in him lives on through him. And I did the same thing with a lot of stuff. If I find my spirit animal type people and they're already doing something, I let it go um, because I know I can find it through them. 
I know that that idea is expressed through them. We don't need to keep rinsing and repeating the same ideas. That's why a lot of these splice things and these conversations are weird with music and people cheating or recopying beats and using construction kits. The reason why it feels so awkward to people um, because it doesn't seem to offer no utility. These people aren't bringing anything different forward. And I try not to uh, waste time doing the same thing. That's why I'm one of the people that get aggro when I feel like someone's copying my video. It's not about them copying my video because I use splice loops, I, I sample, I use VSTs that help me uh, become a pirate of music in itself. So it'd be stupid for it to be that to be the reason. The real root reason and the frustration is they're not offering anything different than what I just said. And they're not even good at it saying what I said. So leave me alone. That's how I feel about art. That's how I feel about a lot of things. So that's that. And that's also why when Jay Dilla died and he stopped creating music, it took all these other people doing his style of music to manifest. Stay woke. We don't all see we don't all see the cloud atlas like that. I, I understand it. <laughs> if you go to a concert, you bought music facts. If you sub to a streaming service, you bought music facts. I asked my friends on Facebook where they buy their music and it was crickets. Lots of YouTube and Spotify comments. What's up? I remember when I used to rewire FL Studio and 5 together. Yeah, we had to because that Roland Phantom and Triton sounds were in NNXC format. Stay woke. Fair point, CMP. Arson, concerned about me punching them in the face. LOL. <laughs> Bush is crazy. I really need to push pause. What's good, Davis? MG, I would like to see a video of FL Studio inside of Studio One as Rewire. It doesn't exist. I don't know what a, va a Vaffle Waffle is, bro. I've been looking at live for a while now. I'm debating that or Adam. Okay. Buy the MP, bro. When you're in traffic and you ain't got nothing else to do, you can always pull it out and start working. Excellent for that kind of stuff, man. Hey. Q the turnip says he's December 1st. Hey. Yeah, he drew, drew. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, man. Jamie Jones drew, drew. <laughs> oh, man. He, he drew. He drew, drew. He ain't. Oh, there's a Jamie Jones EDM artist. Disgusting. How am I supposed to find him now? Oh my God, CC Nemo! Don't, don't put him in the obscurity. Here we go. That's why I start having all these weird wallpapers because of him, because he draws like that. My wallpapers is an attempt to get more art from him, but he's not putting more art out for free because he's being paid. But yeah, this is a lot of his old stuff. Like Jamie drew, drew. Like the Destiny. Uh, the Destiny 2 uh, shopping area. That's why I don't draw no more. I'm not doing that. I, I, I no, <laughs> no. I don't like Asians using that word. Uh oh, how far behind the chat are we? YouTube has really got selling music hard, even just selling, getting people to stream. All my homies are broke and are like, YouTube is free. So, the good news is, even if all your homies, because your homies aren't your base, right? Like, learn learn from that story about Jesus, right? Like, I guess, like, if you don't read the Bible, or you don't have someone extrapolate the wisdom that's in the Bible, whether you're a Christian or not, it's irrelevant. The wisdom is uncanny. But um, when Jesus talks about leaving his hometown because he couldn't perform miracles. I think that caused a lot of problems in people's heads because it was like, well, you're Jesus, son of God, according to this narrative, and you couldn't perform miracles as a child of God or son of God or manifestation of God in your hometown. Really? Really, Jesus? And he wasn't saying that. What he was talking about, he was talking about faith and belief. Because most of his miracles were performed by the people he performed the miracle on, not himself. He didn't perform any miracles. 
the people he performed the miracle on performed the miracle because he gained agreement with every last single one. He says, do you believe you are healed? He says, good, then go and sin no more. Something to that effect. There's always this call and response. Two or more come together and the thing is manifested, right? So it's that connection of another person or more people. Um, and because he was in his hometown, everyone seen him as Jesus, Mary's son. Oh, that little kid that used to play by the lake. Oh, that little kid that used to build, you know, chairs or whatever he was doing as a carpenter in this story, I'm all in the story context. So the people in his neighborhood, the people who knew him growing up as a child, like, man, you doing what? Get out of here. Get out of my face, bro. You're going to do what? You're going to do what with the Roman Empire? You're the son of who? Imagine that's that's exactly how you feel when you explain shit to your family and your friends. Like, yo, I'm going to be the next Dr. Dre. And people will be like, really? Really? They look at you. They analyze you. They, they, they psychoanalyze everything you've done wrong or don't do good enough. And then they compare it to the sigil or the icon of a Dr. Dre and try to add it up. And they tell you right where you are. You can't be that. You don't have all these other ingredients that they think are required to be a Dr. Dre. And therefore, they steal your steam away from you. So that's what Jesus was saying. I literally cannot get these people to believe or have faith where I am from. So I have to go somewhere else. So I say all of that to just talk about music. Music's the same way. Which you make, where you are, like I, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's a very small place, but it's a really big place. I know who all the artists are. I know who all the producers are at any given moment, at any given event, at any given show. But none of them know I do YouTube. None of them know I'm MG The Future. If they walk past me at the restaurant or Walmart, no one recognizes who I am. Most people who watch my channel who live near me, they're like, oh shit, you live in Raleigh, North Carolina? No one knows. It's the same exact thing. But if I leave my hometown and I go to YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, it's a different thing, right? So it's the same thing with your music. If you're creating music and you're trying to monetize it, you have to not think locally. You got to get out local thinking. That's why the internet is here. The internet will connect you to your real tribe. And I know it's, it's harder to find that. It's harder to identify what that is because if you're split in the middle of pretending to be or be like someone else, you'll never find it. And if you're expressing yourself and you don't actually see examples of that working, you don't even know how to manifest that because where you're from locally, people have been beating you down and forcing you to think and feel a certain way. So the first thing you got to do before you try to free other people is free your damn self. Bars. You got to free yourself first. You got to free yourself from all those people in the hometown trying to hold you down and going, you can, you can't, maybe, maybe not. You, you're broke, you're this, you're black, you're white. All this shit. You got to let that go first and then create. And you almost have to have like this fuck it attitude. Like, I'm going to do it anyway. I don't care what y'all doing, but I'm doing this. And the moment, you, the quicker, the quicker you embrace that, and the reason why I was going back and forth in the chat about the guy talking about Blood Dragon, talking about all the different ways music's monetized, not monetized, the quicker you let that go, and focus on what you can do and what you are doing, the universe shows you. Like, it's a billboard every time, G. I'm telling you, it ain't even got shit to do with shit. It ain't even got nothing to do with you researching. It ain't got nothing to do with how much you read, how many videos you watch. It ain't got nothing to do with none of that. I think all of it comes from you making up your mind. And I think every time you make up your mind, the, the fucking, the clouds open and people be like, yo, <laughs> like we're waiting for you, G. All right, now that you opened your mind up and you made up your mind on what you're doing, try this. And you'll notice it'll be dumb until you recognize the pattern. It's usually stupid. Be like, yo, try to do this. And someone will say it. And then remember I say all the time, like there's three people telling me the same thing. Let me see what it's about. That's how I came across Scalar, right? I wasn't I wasn't ever going to do the Scalar review. I don't know if y'all remember that la this time last year. I wasn't ever going to do the Scalar review. People were saying in my comments, yo, check out Scalar. I'm like, what for? So it's the same thing when you, you pursue your own path. It, it, I'm talking about it in terms of these ideas, but this applies to everything. This applies to just regular work, regular labor. This requires to relocate. This, this applies to relationships. Do your own thing and you'll start to see signs of what you should do. And the better you do it and execute it, the quicker you execute it, the more signs you get. And the more you recognize what's happening to you, 
you'll start to see that the shit is like you're on autopilot already. Your misery and your suffering and your brokenness comes from you not listening to your damn self. And I don't know how to explain that to people because it's such a, it's such a, so many people I meet have everyone else's voices in their head that they haven't heard their own voice before. Or they, they've been, they've been taught in, um, they've been convinced not to listen to themselves. So their voice is this small little kid. So you got to wake that up first. And that's all internal work. That's different pain and misery. You got to purge out of yourself. You got to cry a little bit. You got to separate yourself a little bit. You got to go into the darkness just a little bit. And then let that shit go and come back and go, all right. <laughs> you know, like I'm doing it. Like, fuck what y'all talking about. You live once. And, and that's the beautiful thing. The, the, the beautiful thing about why you can do that and why it works for the people who do that is because I think everyone realizes that you're going to die anyway. So it's kind of like, how, how fucking whack is it not to do it? Like, it's the dumbest thing not to listen to yourself. It's the dumbest thing not to do it. It's the stupidest shit ever. Bro, you're going to die anyway. Like, you don't even know when you're going to die. That's stressful. You don't even know when you're going to die. You're making all these contingency plans for 40 and 50 and 60, and you might be dead next week. So I know that's a risky way and a dumb way to look at it, but I think I realistically, for my scientific and mathematical people, my matter-of-fact people, that's the only way to see it because you don't even know if tomorrow's promise. So how can you make contingency plans for the future? It doesn't fucking make sense. You could bet on the odds, but damn it. With one life, with an expiration date that you're not aware of, you got to do whatever you got to do. And you're always, the, the GPS is always on. The coordinates are always on. People get in trouble when they don't listen to themselves. Come on now. We've seen it. When people do crimes and stuff, it's always connected to the fact of being influenced or molded or, or persuaded or bullied or uh, punked into doing something they didn't want to do. That impulse to, I don't want to do it, that's what you should have listened to. That's self. That's not self calling you a punk. That's self saying, bro, you're going to jail. <laughs> ah, anyway, I'm off that. Would you ever go to the Illmind podcast? I think the discussion would be dope for there. I would talk to Illmind. Hey, does he does some cool stuff? Yeah. Is he a concept artist? Yeah, Jamie is. Installing the Blender 2.8 beta. I'm right behind you. As soon as I get another mouse. Way back. Preacher, preacher. More love from strangers and friends and family when it comes to music, yes. Dope snare. Preach. For yourself. <laughs> Back around. <laughs> Say that's, that's interesting, and I have to go. Yeah. Commitment and consistency. Plays a twenty thousand collection plate. Yeah, I'm burnt out. <laughs> this was supposed to be a live discussion. I don't even have the energy to create anything because my brain went all the way. What is it? Right brain. It went into a whole different brain. So reason, open application. I just want to see if it works. Open it. It is open. I just want to try out my beautiful piano. I only got a trial. Because I want to see how beautiful it is in beats before I commit to it. I don't hear nothing. Mm. Is there a way to use it? What do you call? I think that's it. 
And I just want to see if reason bounces in place. That would be interesting because then I'll use this more. And I want to see how Studio One handles that. I think it's just Command B. Bruh. Man, come on, dog. It recorded the metronome. Why would it record the metronome? That's trash. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> what? That's Reason's metronome. It's recording Reason. Mm. Did it change? It's not, it's not disabled. It's not muted. Interessante. I do not like. It's kicking out knowledge, but it ain't receiving any. I don't know. Nah, it stopped the sounds. Like if I play here, I'm fine. But the MIDI I played, trash. So that might be not good. I don't know what I played. <laughs> it's not playing it back. That is crazy. It recorded what I played. It heard what I played. Maybe Reason is... Maybe it's not Studio One playing at all. No, because it played the first time. Is, is Reason listening to me? No, it's not. It's Studio One. So Studio One's doing it. Bro, I don't know. Like I said, it only takes a few of those for me not to use something. <laughs> if too many things act like that, I don't even try to fix it. I just stop using it. And that's a bad that's a bad thing, but time is money. Stay woke. Uh, I'm curious to see if that does that. Yes. Figuratively, it works. I just don't know why it's not playing my MIDI back, and that's trash. Oh. Turn input monitoring off? Bars. It should work. I'll take record off, even. But if I hit it, it works on that track. Route to the audio. Try muting rewire. De donde? I don't know, my friends. I don't know. Default mix channel, maybe? Master section? No. These are all the audio modules. These are everything in your mixer. It's none of that. It's all film score. That's the instrument I'm playing. Because if I switch this, it still plays. This is my group. 
microphone in the way, god damn it. It's not routed at all. Reason doesn't care about it being... I'll add another sound. I'm going to add another sound to, so I know I'm controlling the right sound. Okay. Okay. So it works on subtractor. It's not that then. What are you called? Maybe I'm not even routing the right thing. I'm bugging, bro. You were called default. That's useless. This is called piano. Let's call this bass. There we go. This should be a little bit better. No. Trash. Bass. I renamed it and nothing. So this is the patch within the show. Okay, so I understand how that works. But where's piano within piano? It has to be that one. Bruh. It's bypassing Studio One. Studio One is listening and Reason is listening. Reason is the one making all the sounds. Studio One is just recording the MIDI. Studio One is actually not triggering Reason, but it triggers Reason when I had it on bass guitar. And it decides to stop when it wants to. It's not consistent. Yeah. So you're about to bass guitar. Okay. I don't even know what it's playing to be honest because I didn't play that. <laughs> Money. So it works for the individual, it doesn't work for my piano. So me. Instead of trying to figure out how to do this the right way, I'm going to skip all that. I'm going to add another piano on top of a piano. So I ain't got to worry about that. And I'm lit. I'm going to name it here, though. It might be it might be talking to it from there. We're going to figure this out. Because I need subtractor on all my hip-hop beats. Uh, add instrument chart. Hot down. Reason, piano too. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, that first piano instance is trash. We got it. We got it. We can get everything to work. Oh, no. It's not going by these names. It's going by these names. Trash. That's what was happening. Oh, I figured it out. Okay, my bad. That's all on me. And I have to harass nobody's comments on YouTube to figure it out. Ain't that a bitch. All right, so trash. There you go. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you're trash. Yeah. You're trash. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, we got it. Lit. It won't none of that in the chat. It won't none of that. It was just that I was uh, triggering the wrong sound. I wasn't triggering the actual... In my mind, in my brain, I was looking for the names of uh, 
don't do that. Damn it. This microphone's in my way. All right. So what I was doing was I, I saw the name. I recognized all the names in my reason list. Like it was naming like master section. It was doing it in chronological order, like from hardware down. So when I saw, uh, this is called cinematic something. So when I saw that, I was trying to control that. But it's not that. Studio One don't care about that. Studio One cares about these tracks. So as long as you name these tracks and then you route to these tracks, you can forget what's going up up top. It don't matter. All this is trash. Just, just focus on these three, the names, and then route those names using reason and that name. And you're good. Monitor on, monitor off, it don't matter. Because uh, I think irregardless of what's armed here, um, my MIDI controller is always going to be triggering reason because my MIDI controller is active in Reason. I think the extra step I can do is disable my Akai Mini in Reason, so there is no MIDI input but Studio One. So Studio One has to be the master input or the only input in Reason. But then that messes you up when you switch back to Reason and use a standalone, right? You gotta remember to re-enable it. But for my uses, I might just use Reason constantly that way, disable my MIDI controller, only use it as a rewire slave, and this way, we only get the uh, live action. You see how like the bass and the piano are being struck? What else, bro? But that was it. Mm. Love that sound. I love that piano. That piano is lit. Is it possible to route a whole mix in S1 to the Reason SSL mixer? I don't know that a, I don't know that a rewire passes through audio. So it does not appear to me that Reason has a module that receives rewire information. Because you notice rewire goes like host versus slave. So Studio One's the host, it's gonna generate and process all the audio. The slave is just passing its channels through to Studio One. Um, Reason doesn't work the other way where Reason's the host in Ableton, Fruity Loops, Studio One is the slave. Because then Reason would need different audio modules or, or different racks to uh, process that audio or for you to mute and solo that audio. It'll need to create a virtual mixer for its rewire devices. So basically how we have uh, this rewire module here to activate it and then we have this drop down menu here to use it. Reason would have to do the same thing for you to use the SSL mixer from mixes of your other DAWs. So it does not do that. Historically, Reason has never done that. Reason created Rewire for it to be part as a rack module in Cubase. <laughs> but yeah, back to business. So I understand this now. So I get the, I get the, whoa, slow down, chief. I get what's happening. I understand it now. I get it. A little bit easier in Ableton, just saying. But that's because it's, it looks different in Ableton. It's not easier. It just looks different. All right. So, what I want to do is check Splice real quick for who I can devour. I searched classical piano. Let's see if it's based on a true story. It's not going to play. Don't preach out my sample. What I'm about to show you may get you in trouble in certain countries. So I'm going to use one credit. Blowing credits is what we do. That's why they give them to us. So it just kind of goes into like the whole conversation about like, you know, streaming, people buying, do people buy music? Like, think about, let me be careful with this. Think about what I'm doing here. I have a Splice subscription that I pay for. I'm paying for 300 credits a month. Mind you, I don't do it every month. I do it whenever something exciting comes out. 
But I, I do these 300 credits for however many, 15, 19 dollars, whatever it is, right? And I go through this list of other content creators and I download their single shots or ideas. Mind you, nothing I've heard so far is challenging for me to remake by ear. It'll take me some time, but I can figure it out. So why am I buying it? Why am I why am I paying for credits and why am I using credits to get Alex's piano just for me to do some weird stuff to show or teach people honestly? And then if the camera is off and I was doing this by myself, how could I have done that differently? Because what I'm about to show you, I can do without Alex. I don't actually need to start here. I don't need to be in here. But what is what propels me to do that? And the answer to that is also the answer or part of the answer to why people would buy your beats still when beats are free on YouTube. Why people will buy your single still when songs are free and streaming. Is that I am in a tribe that wants to support other creatives. I want Alex to see that somebody gave him a credit and when he checks into his dashboard, he feels the support. I want all these people to feel like Capson and all these guys like, yo, we're actually doing something for the culture and the culture is using it, right? I want to participate in that. I don't care about giving Spice $10 when I can because it always comes back to me. And that's the part that most people don't connect. And let me connect it in the context of a, con in the context of a content creator. So I have to use Splice because I can't use Motown anymore. And the reason why I can't use Motown no more is because every time we do it, we get these little emails and these threatened emails about demonetization and destabilizing the platform, right? But when we really think about that, I have to respect that because I don't have the rights to do that. Um, it wasn't licensed to me. It's actually them, they're correcting and making us do the honorable or the right thing, right? But in, in them doing that, now I have to look somewhere else for my source or my sauce. So Splice becomes my sauce. So as a content creator, Splice solves two problems. I can find something when I'm not in the mood to make it myself or I'm unable to make it myself. And two, I can go through these ideas and show you how to go audio to MIDI and all these things without having to violate YouTube's policy or the record label that owns the music that I prefer to sample. Now there's a weird permutation that's happening from that. Because more and more people are doing this, I know I do it, I know CMP does it, there's a lot of us. That means the music we're making is less soul, less Motown, less of those things, and more of these things. So it's its own market. 10 years from now, people are gonna be looking for all of these loops on a torrent somewhere because they're not gonna be here no more. And they're gonna be trying to do what we do to the old music, to this. They're gonna try to figure out the loop that such and such use or Metro Boomin use or Killshot Eminem use the 12 year olds today in the future. And these sites aren't gonna be cool no more or the licenses agreements or these designers go on and get married like everyone does in the beat making game. This will all go away. And then these kids are gonna be looking for the dumps of this stuff. So in real time, we're already changing the future of music and what it's gonna sound like and what it's gonna to mean to people. Um, so I kind of feel like I'm, I, it's going to happen whether I'm involved or not. So I put myself involved in it. And there's a lot of cool tertiary benefits. Um, I know one of the brothers, Dope Snare, he's like, yo, about to get into trap. What do you recommend? My opinion? If you're not making trap melodies, download a trap melody. <laughs> what are we talking about? Get a trap melody, find out the key of it, play your 808 first, put your snare in your clock where it needs to be, put a hi-hat loop under it, and you have the starting place. At that point, the track's almost done because it sounds like a trap beat. Then you do the arrangement and everything else and add what you want. So it just makes you work smarter and faster too. Like there's a, I can go on, like my brain, I've I've logistically sorted this out. MG did that, so hopefully you ain't gotta go through that. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good, fam. But let me go back to the, to the fuck shit I'm trying to do. Let me show you why I did this. Because it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense to show you. All right, so this is Alex's piano. I don't know that Alex had a tempo on his piano. Alex, please be tempo matched. 91 in C minor, right? It was right there on the file. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. Um, so it's 91 beats per minute, but it's not really, is it? Uh, uh. 
See, Studio One's not time stretching. Why aren't you time stretching, my friend? There's always something, bro. He's playing live piano. He's not playing a VSC. That might be a real, no. It might be an audio performance, not a MIDI performance, because that beat started way over there. We got time for that. Stuff like that irritates me, bro. Like it's off just a little bit right there. That late doom doom, that's trash. Stop it. It's still off, but it's just a it's just a a micro off. I could deal with that. And the reason why I'm anal pause about this is because I'm not using this. What are we talking about? I just need the MIDI, and I need the MIDI to be lined up without being destroyed so I can use it for something else, right? Instrument track, boom, dummy track. Let's just call it a piano MIDI. Oh, do it like me. Bring it down, huh? See, so then you get this MIDI, and you're like, eh, it's kind of on beat. I hate kind of on beat. All right. <clears throat> It's gonna foley my plans. Let's try it though. You never know until you try it. Uh, thank you. Desktop. Can I do a new folder from desktop? We're gonna call this one Easy Keys. So you already know what I'm about. I want to take this file, I'm going to keep the name on it, so I, I, you always want to keep track of your sauce, so if the Wave Supply Boys come after you, you know what it was, they can't come after you for this. No one can come after you for this. So I got his piano as a MIDI, I held the Alt or Option key on Mac to make sure it's a MIDI file and not a PreSonus file. Then we go to uh, Easy Keys, and I'm going to show you why the timing is impeccable and required, because it's not going to work. But I just want to show you how you do it because I had a question about this. Um, no one, someone asked me this question again. How do you put your own MIDI in Easy Keys? So, uh, Tune Track, Easy Keys. All right. So Easy Keys has some decent sounds. I'm just a, a texture whore. Don't even worry about what that means. All right. So I'm gonna go to a browser. I'm gonna go to my menu, and um, we're gonna look for something. There's a thing that we do. There's a settings icon. Bruh. They don't dare stop with settings. Where, where are you? I think it's add folder. No. It's not that. It's a settings that we do. I know where it is. I've only done it a hundred times. Browser, add folder to browser, not add a folder in the browser. Two different things going on here. Add folder to browser, go to desktop, add easy keys. Now when I go back to browser, easy keys should be here. No, it doesn't show up here at all. It shows up here at the bottom. Easy keys, boom, and there goes Alex's piano. See how that sounds trash? <sighs> Another day, but I'm gonna try it anyway. That's just how I roll. A minor, money, A minor seven, money, money, 
A minor can go to G minor. And then G minor can go back to G. It really can't do all that. I'm just gonna try it though. When you do that, when you do that kind of thing, those are always colored chords. They're not regular. Almost always. Back it up. You can, I need a passing chord though. I'm gonna have to two five one that. I wanted to go out of key and then end the key, but I'm not that cool. All right, so F can do it. He sounded so sad. He was like, I'm not even close to any of y'all. Then you take that and then use Alex's playstyle. Bars. So you get what I was trying to do. You get how powerful Splice then becomes with your existing tools. Because there's a million people playing piano and no one plays it the same. So if I could have, if my brother Alex Lust would have played this to a metronome, um, the readout would have been more clearer. What I don't want to do is quantize this. I don't want to quantize this because there's no point in using it. You feel me? So. I would have to sit here and manually like, I'm gonna have to go in here like this and then put everything on the line and like these passing notes and make sure they're quarters and stuff and um, making sure this isn't there. And you know, you should do it. You should put that kind of attention into it. But then that takes away from the way it sounded to begin with. And it's trash because you move one little note too far left or nudge it too far right. It don't sound like the original thing no more. And then it's like, why did I do all of that? So anyway. We won't drag that out. <laughs> um, all these tracks are muted. Easy keys I'm gonna have to bypass. And then here, of course, I can I can quantize it and fix it and all that. My what did I do? What else? metronome come in here and you're gonna notice I picked those chords Alex is playing but those are my chords so what are we talking about like what, what like really what do we what what, 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 what uh, the Joe Buddy podcast are using that Cardi B bite how convenient is that how convenient stay woke out here guys Feels like it's out of key because I like picking out of key chord progressions. But I want to check and see if I know what that scale is. A does go to A doesn't go to G. It goes to F. And then E is what threw me off. This needs to be D minor seven. I want to keep this simple. This is going to become a D minor chord progression. And notice how I changed that chord and it already updated. I, we don't need to hear it. I just drag it in. Okay, bang bang. And the reason why I did that is because now the, the key is D minor. And with the key being D minor, de donde, I can set a Studio One's piano roll to the scale lock to D minor. And then I could take all my keys. And if your play style, your performance was off, like there's a passing tone or something that's not in scale and Easy Keys doesn't do the math correctly, you just take this and you move it and then it fixes the keys that are out of key.
is that joint called that we got? We got that new joint last week? I hate struggle J Dilla loops. Don't do that. <laughs> what's, cra what's crazy that this is a lo-fi drum kit by a lo-fi producer, but none of that is used in lo-fi. It always boggles my mind. That's why, I, that's why I gotta stop playing around and just make my own again. I need to keep making them. Because I know what they're missing. I'm not going to tell them either. I know why they don't. I, I know why they don't know how to make it. Because they don't. They don't know what people think lo-fi is. They're just making beats. using Studio One to slave uh, Reason for the chord track because Reason doesn't have it yet but if you have Studio One already you don't need Reason to have it Reason doesn't need to waste your time developing one if you're using this right trash where's the piano I'm controlling and why yeah let's not do that let's do that And let's see if it actually guess my chords. Because this won't work if it doesn't work. This won't work if it doesn't know. C over A. I didn't put none of that in easy keys, but okay. All right. Let's do that. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to play the C note. Try it. Follow chords bass. Let's see what happens. snap is on uh, I'm going up to full-blown Neptune Um, 
it's the right key, wrong note. Right in the right chord tone, but the wrong chord. And you can see the notes you want to follow. Sometimes bass guitarists really want to be a lead guitarist, or at least when I do it. So y'all do it y'all way. This is how I do it. Um, so I start with just C notes to get my rhythm. I'm only worried about rhythm. Then we do the chord map to uh, fix them, you know, to the right chords or the chord changes. And then you go back and do ghost channels and add the passing tones and things that you hear in your head or the play style that you don't know how to play. And someone knows how to convert this to a full MIDI track. I don't know how to do that. There's this extra step where you freeze it or something and it stays. So then you can do it, you can reiterate. Um, I think the brother Marcus, Marcus the Manual, he did a tutorial about chord tracking. He did it and I was like, bruh, I didn't even know that was a step, but you do that step. If you don't do that step, you can just use this clip and it's fine, but it's going to be contingent upon this being across your whole track because if this shows up when this isn't there, it sounds like trash. And I've exported a beat like that where later down the line, one of the chords was missing and I uploaded it and everything, I just let it ride, but I don't think it's worth it. These drums are trash, but it's a break. It's not the drums. No one ever uses sounds like that, right? No reason, reason, reason. No, we can't have, we can't, we can't. Sorry, reason. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I need to add a dummy track to reason. Reason doesn't have a dummy track. Yeah, it does. Ooh, bars. <laughs> All right, I got my input quantize on. Ties MPC three thousand. Another thing about Studio One, which is beautiful, if you got the Melodyne, it doesn't matter which Melodyne version you have, just do Command M, because this, for like your, your kicks, your snares, your 808s, you do Command M to bring up Melodyne, and I bring it up to see what the key is. So this is tuned to D major, 
or D flat major, and then right click, send the sample one, set the root note to D flat. I don't know how this does it though. I think it's like, uh, can you click it in? Right there. It shows up as C sharp here. So this is C when you hit C. And then you can just remove this track because you don't need your 808 just in there randomly. And then once you get your 808, just copy your kick down. And then adjust. Who has the EQ that I need? There you go. Oh, that's what's messing my brain up. I can quantize the audio. Another thing. You quantize it to MPC so your, your drums and your grooves are in the same pocket. Stay woke. It's too groovy though. I can't do that with the break. I need a lesser setting. 50. 50 will work. Just a touch. Mm, snapping, no snapping. De donde? Don't snap. My next for you snapping. All right. And then I think I could bring the kick back. Something like that. I'm just messing about at this point. I'm, I turn everything into lo-fi, and I'm not. I wasn't even trying to make a lo-fi beat. I was just trying to show you how that reason piano sounds. And mind you, um, that's reason making that piano sound. It's not audio yet. headphones I don't know I really don't know I have one question where the heck is my 808 no no wait a minute I'm doing something epically wrong where is a uh, my baseline I'm bugging bro is it putting the reason I'll put reverb on the bass in the piano? Is that why I'm feeling weird? Strange? What happened to my bass track? Track 8? Track 8 doesn't have an output. Ain't that a bitch. So reason's just creating a master output for both. 
so I can't put reverb on it. And I shouldn't be putting reels on it either. Where are you though? Why is that a thing? I don't want to double mall. Fuck, it is lo-fi. I'm doing it because I'm not going to... I know what I have to do differently. I'm going to have to create... I have to bounce them individually. I don't want to do that. playing it like an 808 like a trap beat i'm just put the 808 the actual 808 is just there for the kick because the kick by itself sounds like a box the 808 with the kick sounds like a kick the bass line is being put into the reverb with the reason piano because i use subtractor and reason and i think it's audio output is coming out i have to bounce the audio or record it one uh reason track at a time unless there's a way to like do an audio track which there is a way to do it you do an audio track and um, you feed it reason. But I just don't know where that is. I don't know that it does that via rewire, right? Like it would have to show up here as a reason track and then have its own mixer channel as a result. But it doesn't. Reason is feeding all of the reason sounds here because they expect you to use reason to balance the final mix and then you can rec like tape record it into your DAW at the end when you export the beat. But that doesn't make sense for lo-fi because I'm not putting cleaver on bass. Uh, it's just trash. I know what I have to do. The, the setup makes sense. I'm just trash. It's not. They're not trash. I'm trash. It doesn't matter. We're going to figure it out.
I don't know how to um I don't know how to expand it, bro. Or I don't know what you mean by I know you know what you mean by that, but I don't know what I'm expanding, I guess. Pause. Yeah, this is this is easy money. That's the easy part. The hard part is the arrangement, right? I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna figure out this rewire business one day. Drop down arrow next to reason. You mean like here? Are these connected? Are you saying these are uh, relative to each other? They're not relative to each other. In fact, I don't even know what that is. To be honest with you, bro. I have no idea how it's doing what it's doing. Let me try to mute this. So if I mute reason track, that's my first rewire track. I run in rewire, blah, 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 I created reason, right? If I mute it, the bass and the piano disappear. So the audio that I'm processing, this should be called reason. I'm trying to figure out from here, how do we separate this track into the piano subtractor or piano subtractor? And I don't know. The MIDI, the MIDI in the arrangement makes sense because they're just driving it, but the sound isn't, I don't see how you separate this. Right next to the blue track. Down arrow next to reason, right in the blue track. Right next to reason. Blue track, right next to the blue track. This one. No in the mix, so the mixer's down here. I see inserts. Not too many down arrows, man. We need those laser pointers. <laughs> Don't tell me where read it. Where it is. Where is it in relative of the fader? <laughs> is it right above the fader? Because if you're talking about in here, I don't see it. Or you mean here. Ah. Now can we separate the channels? Then I have to tell Reason to send them there. I don't know how to do that. Channel 3, channel 4. outputs are being used. That's the whole point. Tab to turn around is not working. Is my keyboard working? My keyboard's working. Reason it's not letting me tab. Trash. Yeah. You would have to be able to send these to and I don't know. I just, it's not worth it. I'd rather just record them one at a time, to be honest with you guys. You got to do some goofiness like this. And I don't feel like messing this up because I'm going to mess it up. Bass has to go from its track. <laughs> Yeah, they don't show up. So it's going to master section. And the master section goes to main inputs. And you're supposed to change them here. But that's way too deep. Nah, because I don't have a, you have to save a template and everything. And I'm not going to be like that. I'm going to reach in here for my bass line and for my piano. I'm going to have to like record them as audio. And I don't feel like doing it right now. Yeah, it's all good. I'll just have reverb on my baseline for no reason.
That's interesting. He doesn't know how to do that. It can't do it in real time. The performance meter is going too high. That's interesting. Reason is giving me a more performance pull rewired than Omnisphere does by itself, which is interesting because I'm only using two modules. What is that? What is it peaking on? I don't know what that is. I have 20 gigs of RAM left. It ain't a RAM issue. Huh. That's bad because I'm processing audio coming out of reason and it's taxing the system. So that's there is a simple way to separate in reason. Yeah, but you have to communicate it to Studio One or Rewire. But I don't have to do all that. It ain't worth it because I'm not using more than two tracks in reason. It's yeah, it'd be frustrating to do that every time you start a project. Because you don't know if you're going to keep the sound or not. Same thing with like Omnisphere. I'll use Omnisphere, then I'll delete it at the last minute. But um, I think that's it. That's all I wanted to do. I want to see how dope that piano is. And that piano is as dope as I think it is. It's the, uh, by Sound Iron. And interestingly enough, Sound Iron makes a lot of contact instruments. But that, I think that piano is only a rack extension. I don't know why companies are doing that. But yeah, man. That's all I got for today. We did some Sunday service first thing in. And then we got Reason figured out in Studio One. I had to go through all the heartaches and pain so you guys don't when you try it yourself. Because I know a lot of Reason users are switching to Studio One because of the rent to own on Splice. So you can, you being more Reason minded, you'll figure out the kinks in this workflow. But it's there for you. And then all the cool things like the grooves and the, the groove templates and stuff. And you'll still have all that. What I'm excited about and always excited about is quantizing audio and then of course uh, revealing what's inside audio and of course making something easy keys. And, um, that original piano sound real quick. Let's go back to it. guys i'm out of here any comments questions or concerns before i head out this is live chat 66 my ipad reacts faster than my computer does i just saw you say uh, dope but it doesn't say that here yeah so mobile is faster than my computer musashi musashi Mm, yeah. All right, George. All right, everybody. I appreciate you. I'm out in these streets. Uh, it's Saturday. So I got the whole day ahead of me. I'm going to figure out something. Take my own advice, really. I got to take this camera out, probably make some more visuals, and get my lo fi bag some more. But um, hopefully that answers the question, especially for the brother Dope Snare and everyone that was talking to me about uh, Studio One. Hopefully you guys see what it, the magic is. There's not like, there's not a lot that I do in this program besides what I just showed you. Like, it's just simple, straight ahead. If you work in a linear way, like one track at a time, that's the pros and cons. Like when you compare it to Ableton, Ableton isn't one track at one thing at a time. You wouldn't work this way in Ableton. So it depends on what kind of creative you are. But I'm all of them, so I can do whatever I want to do, right? But in this case...
I'll do my struggle, Dilla. My struggle piano. 